is up my ninjas? I am Strident and today we are taking a look at the Combiner Wars Leader Class Megatron. <clears throat> He's kind of an oddity because there are three versions of this guy. You have a Galvatron, a uh, what you call it, Armada Megatron, and then the classic style one. And it's kind of a combination of the G1 uh, robot mode and the G2 alt mode because he turns into a tank which I love because I always felt like he didn't fit with the theme of his Decepticons and them being weapons of war and whatnot. But uh, Megatron is probably my favorite Transformers character. His attitude is just perfect. And uh, I love the design of this figure. And uh, you know, despite all the, the criticisms and the fact that you have third party figures that came out at the same time, this is still a very good version of Megatron. And I'm gonna show you so the first thing you'll notice is he has a very striking sculpt in robot mode. And the dude is tall, you know, he's almost 10 inches, if not close to, you know, exactly 10 inches. I, did, I should have measured him, I didn't feel like it, sorry. But he towers over many of your deluxe class and you know, he almost feels like an old school, what is it, Voyager? He's just big. I mean, he's bigger than the majority of the Combiner Wars figures, and that's including Motormaster and uh, Prime and uh, Silverbolt, you know, all the bigger ones. He's the biggest, and it's kind of weird. He doesn't combine with anything, but his sculpt is perfect. It's spot on. They're going for more of an IDW style Megatron, which I dig. I really love the way he was drawn in uh, the IDW series. Um, it's kind of weird because I have, I always wanted a Megatron that was about the scale of the, uh, or size of the Masterpiece Prime, the MP01, the very first one, and I never had one. Then I give that to someone for their uh, birthday, I gave that to my, you know, homeboy Prime, and then years later this comes out, so it's kind of like, shit, now I gotta find something, you know, a Prime that's big enough. But, you know, I'll just see this as an upgrade, because Megatron is kind of like the, uh, you know, the power hungry, I have to have a bigger, more powerful body. So, you know, let me keep upgrading. At least that's the way I use him. So, uh, you know, he can look thorough against my favorite prime, which is that one right there, which I think they still haven't made one better yet. And, uh, maybe the, uh, the Orion. But this thing, I mean, like any pose I put him in, as long as he's looking down at somebody, you know, as long as you have him in an arrogant kind of pose, it just works. Um, as far as the paint goes, it's flawless. I have no slop, nowhere. You even have options as far as where, uh, what symbols you put on him because in the IDW series, Megatron, the war between the two is done. He finally saw the, the error of his ways and decides to become an Autobot. So you can actually, he comes with a sticker sheet where you can actually put the... Uh, Autobot's logo on his chest over that uh, Decepticons one. That might even be the Decepticon sticker. I can't remember. But I prefer him as a Decepticon. I'm keeping it like that because Transformers is kind of stuck in my mind at that specific, you know, the, 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 the how do I put this? It's just stuck in the middle of the war, and that's forever how it's going to be for me. Now here you can see what I'm talking about. He's like a whole uh, like torso and, and head taller than kind of like your deluxe figures. And I'm pretty sure that Prime was a deluxe. Um, I like it. I mean, it's kind of weird, but I, I dig it. Uh, this is probably, I think this is the biggest Megatron that I have ever owned. Um, and I've owned a, actually, it's not. He's about the same height as the Armada Megatron. And I have the original Armada version, which I will show you in the alt mode comparison part. But anyway, like I said, detail-wise, this guy is top-notch. Hasbro did not freaking drop the ball on this guy. I know a lot of people have issues with some of the design choices and, like, the joints and stuff like that, you know. And I guess some of that stuff could either be good or bad depending on what you you know what your your preferences are but uh i dig his light piping it actually works really well something that some of the third parties do not get right on the regular um 
like I said, the height is awesome. The fusion cannon is awesome. You can display it two different ways if you want to. I prefer to display it where he looks more menacing and it's more, it's got the wider end that's more hearkening back to the actual, you know, generation one version of the figure, of the character. Um, the big chunky legs and the chunky forearms, I love that. He just feels this is actually more on point it's not like, you know, the third party versions, like the Mega Steel one. Um, Agent O actually just put up a review for this, and it's crazy because I shot this since forever and I didn't get this out there as soon as I could. But even in comparison to that figure, there are elements of this figure that are more on model than the Mega Steel one. The Mega Steel one, because it's an unofficial product, they had to change some things and add some pieces and make him look a little bit more uh, bulky. Whereas. This is kind of going for a, a pretty accurate, you know, portrayal of the character. I really dig that. Here is a uh, turnaround from, I guess, the design document for what he was supposed to look like actually in the comics. And you can see that the parts are all present on the uh, Hasbro iteration. Um, the next picture is an image from one of the uh, issues of the comic, and you can see they added on stuff. And this is more of the approach that the Mega Steel one takes. So it's not one of those situations that you will hear in a lot of the various uh, reviews that are on there about the Mega Steel one versus the, you know, Hasbro one. For once, Hasbro actually, they were paying attention. You know, Mega Steel just decided to take a different approach. Um, you know, like I said before, the chunky feet. I like that. Um, he's actually a little slimmer in this figure than he is in the comics which i always loved how in the comics they have that extra bit of chunk to them it just makes them look more interesting um the treads instead of folding up on his uh the backs of his shoulders like you saw in the previous picture or i'm sorry a couple pictures back what is that one two three pictures back they fold up on the back instead of having the one piece of the uh you know, the barrel and all that other stuff. Um, there's no, you know, detailing lost on the figure. All over the body, there's detailing, and the detailing works. It looks like gears and, you know, parts that would be on an old school proper, you know, transformer, not that bay shit. Um, the uh, treads on his legs. These treads are working treads something that you usually don't get on a Hasbro figure. And I don't know how they, I mean, I guess I, I understand how they did it, but they did such a good job on it. It makes me wonder how come they don't just do these kind of treads on like Cobra Hisses. Now, my favorite thing on this guy is the fusion cannon, because for once he has a monstrous uh, fusion cannon that it looks like it would take out some Autobots, honestly. That thing is ginormous, and it actually gets bigger when it's in tank mode because this runs through the whole turret piece of the tank. Really good stuff. It's probably the longest barrel they've given him because it actually looks the part. It actually makes the tank, when you see him in his alt mode, it actually makes him feel more menacing. I keep it flipped around opposite the way it fires in tank mode because this looks like the fusion cannon that he has in so many versions of the character. Um, the, uh, the whole fusion cannon itself is on a kind of a swivel hinge assembly. So you can spin it and you also can kind of fold it away from the forearm so that if he's kind of bending his arm it can actually still point in the direction that it does, just like you see in the cartoons and stuff, without you know, staying in the way. And I think it was ingenious because you see this in comics and you see it in the, uh, you know, the movies, but it's kind of hard to understand how it does what it does. And seeing this mechanism, it's like, wow, they all should have this, you know? Because with many of the Megatron figures that I have, he can bend his arm and stuff, but the gun looks kind of goofy sitting off to the side. Before this, my favorite iteration is the Prime version. And as you can see, that fusion cannon is ginormous. Like it's almost too thick and, and, and chunky. You know what I mean? It just, it's like, man. But I mean, it works. I mean, this guy had a very uh, 
alien design. So, you know, I'm not complaining, but uh, if he had a more traditional fusion cannon, I think he would have been a better looking figure. Um, it's just the icing on the cake for this, this character, you know what I'm saying? Um, granted, this fusion cannon has the blade assembly in there, where you can, or the blade gimmick, I'm sorry, where you press down and bites and blade, scissor blades out. It's pretty cool, but you know, we don't all need that kind of thing. So, it's, it's, it's one of those things where he, if you want a more traditional look, this, uh, you know, Combiner Wars version is a better choice than the Prime version. Although the Prime has the you know, better articulation, the sculpt stays together. You don't lose sculpt by moving stuff, because if you notice, and I will get into it more with the uh, articulation, the shoulders, because of uh, there's a transformation joint that allows for really proper extension, but you get these bar things sticking out, which doesn't bother me too much because he's a robot. He's supposed to have pieces and parts that don't look like, you know, human parts. So it doesn't bother me too much. It's just that some people, a lot of people have complained about this. And I'm like, you know, in the cartoons and the comics, mostly the comics, you always see these gears and pistons and stuff in between their arm and their torso and stuff. And finally, there's a figure that has it and people are complaining, you know? This is what I was saying about a lot of Transformers fans just can never be happy. You know what I mean? Um, there's always some kind of nitpick that you gotta have, but I honestly, I dig it. I dig it. I mean, it's it, there. There are issues or places that could be issues for some folks, but I don't have those issues. <laughs> I don't. But you know, I'm pointing them out just in case you're picky, and you know, these could be points of contention for you. Here's his articulation. His head is on a, it's kind of a double hinge. You got a swivel and a hinge, so you can look up really well, look down really well. I'll show you from sideways so you can see. That's down. Wow, it's kind of hard to see because he's way up here. Let me show you from up here. That's down, that's up, that's neutral. So it's not too bad. Swivels perfectly. No issues there. And now let's get to everything else. Arms. There's this cool joint. It comes from the transformation. See, it's hidden in there. So you can pull his arm all the way out if you want, like this. Like that, if you want to get it all the way out. That's the full extension right there. So it works well. I don't have any issues with that. Goes up. You can go 360 degrees because he is a robot. There is this faux ratcheting right here. I mean, it really technically is a ratchet, so it's nice. There's ratcheting in his elbow. The elbow itself is on a bicep or on a swivel. I'm sorry. <laughs> on a, the elbow is on a bicep swivel. Uh, his wrists actually turn, or his fists turn at the wrist. We can stand like such. His feet are kind of in that static kind of straight pose. You can see there's like a little hinge and like a knob that's preventing it from going any further. So that's perfectly straight. It goes out this far. And you could, uh, if you want to make it go out at the sides, you can flip this up, flip it out at the side. Ugh, that's how high up he goes. The problem I have with his uh, articulation, and a lot of people have pointed this out, is that the ratchets just stop at weird places. So that's how far his knee can bend, but then he's got a cool thigh swivel, and it's anatomically correct for a human. Unfortunately, he's a robot. Um, his feet can go up more because of the transformation. See that? But they can't point. So no pointed toes for Megatron when he flies. And then that's about it. Um, the gun, I forgot, I was gonna, I, I said I will get to that in the articulation part. The gun itself, if you pull this down for the transformation, you can pull that aside because that's where it goes when you transform it. So that if you need to do stuff like have him, you know, bend his arms and you want that out of the way, you can do that. Um, it is still kind of long and it's kind of annoying that it's in the way. You can also do this if you prefer. You know what I'm saying? 
because this is more how it will sit once he's transformed. So, um, I don't know. I love it. I know there's a lot of complaints because it's not as perfect as some of those super expensive third party ones, but like, I don't need that, honestly. I just need a thorough looking Megatron that actually looks the part. You know what I mean? Like, thorough, and he's gonna stand up to my Optimus Primes, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just need durable, thorough looking, and this one does it. I mean, that face, that is Megatron. I mean, no matter what anyone says, that face right there, that is Megatron. The alt mode, it's a gorgeous chromed out tank with a Decepticon logo right smack dab in the front. So before that thing either runs you over or blasts you into oblivion, you're going to see that. Um, as I was saying before, the cannon, the cannon extends. So this is what you end up with right when you finish the transformation. And I'm another person who I don't like doing transformations on camera. It, the few Transformers reviews that I've done, I'm not doing that shit. It pads the video, it's whack, it's just, why? It's supposed to be, you know, a, a figure, a puzzle, and, you know, or a robot, a puzzle, and a vehicle. So, you know, here it is. But anyway, like I said, when you transform it, it's short. You extend it, and you end up with this monstrous, you know, uh, <laughs> mandingo of a cannon. So, um, I don't know. It works. And this isn't a small, you know, uh, tank. Many of the third-party ones are kind of small. This guy is actually pretty big and hefty. The transformation is simple, um, and I don't mind that because I like to be able to, to be like and transform him while I'm making the sound effect. So if you remember the size of this monstrous H-Tank that was the Armada Megatron, which I dug the tank more than the figure because the figure is more of a G1-ish I can't move except for it to transform, and and I, I I dug the tank and not so much the robot mode. Um, this thing's bigger than that or longer. Here's uh the movie uh, Sideswipe. I think it's the second movie Sideswipe. I could be wrong. It's either second or third Sideswipe. Um, and you see dwarfs him, so there's kind of a scale going on. And I was kind of trying to pick vehicles that would be in scale, and here he is next to. Uh, this was the first Prime I saw <laughs> that was transformed. I don't really play with this one. I leave him in his alt mode, so it was perfect for this comparison. You know, a truck would be kind of big compared to a tank. These are the trucks. Trucks like this haul these things all the time, so they look pretty comparable as far as size goes. So, uh, and, and I think if you have the Prime Optimus, when you transform him in his alt mode, he's a little bit smaller than this one. You can check my review on Ultimate Optimus and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, I think they did a good job here. For once, you get a hefty figure that turns into a hefty vehicle. A lot of times, the two things don't kind of equal out, so you feel like you got more of one than you did the other, and that's not the case here. Here, I feel like He's hefty enough in both uh, forms. Here he is standing next to my favorite Optimus, which is uh, Super Fire Convoy. Um, you can kind of see that obviously the robot mode towers over him, but this is how you, you know, just so you can get a feel for what the chunky little tank looks like next to one of them. Here he is next to um, Transformers Prime Megatron. If you really didn't feel like, I mean, I guess there's no way to really do it unless you chrome up this version of Megatron. Then you could have that tank be the alt mode and just keep him in his robot mode. You know, it's a, it's a thought. Um, but I like the way they look. I think um, this is one of those times where the tank mode, it just, it's it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, and as you've seen from previous images, the turret actually turns. There's a very specific transformation piece that allows for the turret to turn. And, I, and it turns and has little, you know, ratchets and everything. So I think they did a good job with that. So, um, 
you know, it, this this is 40 bucks. So, you know, it's not as expensive as some of the other ones out there. And it does a good job representing, you know, G2 Megatron in his alt mode and G1 Megatron in his robot mode. So you can't really lose with something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of hard to uh, complain when Hasbro actually went ahead and did something right. The bottom line is, if you want a more modern take on a classic character, you know, on a classic version of a character, such as Megatron, this is definitely the one to get. You know, if you don't have, you know, a shitload of money and you want to drop over a hundred bucks on a Transformer that you may already have several of, this is the bet. This thing is pretty damn sturdy. He's uh, well painted, well sculpted. He's got really decent articulation. He's pretty, excuse me, pretty poseable. I really can't complain. The big thing for me when I'm picking a Transformer or a version of a Transformer is like, does it feel like the character from the versions or the media that I like him in? A lot of things about him scream classic Megatron and you know, it screams the IDW Megatron, but it feels more like an amalgamation of all those things because it's not 100% any of those things. It's very close, but you know, it's not 100% you know, IDW, it's not 100% classic, it's, it's a good mixture, and I like that because it feels like the way I would redesign him in some, you know, ways to fit in like, you know, a Fall of Cybertron, War for Cybertron kind of modern Transformers game that we don't have. So anyway, this, you know, it's a, it's a good alternative. You know, I know many of you that are Transformers fans would rather break the bank, so if you can, go ahead. If you can't, this guy's monstrous enough, he's tough enough, he's huge enough, he's well detailed enough to be your go-to Megatron. So anyway, let's try that. Uh, this has been my review of the Combiner Wars Megatron. I think it's an awesome figure, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Um, thanks for listening, and uh, I guess I will catch you guys on the next video. So, peace outside.